So this is my current setup for my 3D printer with the Prusa. Currently, my Prusa has an issue with the PTFU tube and it's kind of really, really clogged. I figured since I need to take this all apart to change the PTFE tube, I might as well upgrade the enclosure as well. Well, the IKEA stand here is not doing quite a great job. I have looked online for some different ideas to upgrade the setup and I came up with one that I kind of liked. Essentially, I'm going to move this Prusa plus the enclosure with the acrylic to the bottom. Another reason why I'm upgrading this is because I'm also trying to accommodate for a new space for a filament dryer. So I've been seeing a lot of stringing on my 3D printing and I really want to get rid of that. This original Prusa enclosure was pretty good, but it's just not quite even and the IKEA furniture doesn't quite stand up as nicely as I thought it would. So I have decided to custom build a different one. Anyhow, this is what it looks like. Yeah, I don't know what happened to this piece of IKEA furniture, but... Like, how does that happen? I don't recall this part ever being flooded. Okay, so I was printing one day, and then suddenly the filament just kind of got stuck. After get stuck, try to pull it out this way, it didn't work. Try to go into the chamber here and then pull it out, also didn't work. And then I went to the top and he's now keep trying to push it through. Also did not work. Prusa Online tells me that this is a PTFE2 problem, so we are going to try to fix that today. I ordered some online, but unknowingly, I already had PTFE2 spares from when I bought the Prusa initially. So, I now have a whole bunch of PTFE tubes coming in, but I can actually get started on the repairs today, so we're going to do that. Oh yeah, one last thing to mention is when I was online shopping for PTFE tubes, it was like a $2 purchase. I accidentally purchased the Prusa Mini, which was like $800 Canadian, but you know, some things, sometimes things just happen, so. So let me just kind of show you what we're dealing with. We have a filament that's stuck right in the middle over there. I tried pushing it down, I tried pushing it up, none of that works. So we're gonna have to take out the PTFE tube at this point, which means I have to do some disassembly here. Plus a lot of the PET and probably all the silver recycled PET, which is I'm pretty sure the dirtiest thing on there. And now that that's gone, you can actually kind of see that the it's actually a hole here that you can actually see all the way through. There's nothing wrong with it. This is completely fine. There's no burning of anything. It was just the filament. The filament just got stuck. Oh, such a fucking idiot. But hey, we're ready for it because now I know how to fix that part at least and get rid of a whole bunch of gunk on the bottom side of this thing, which is just disgusting. Look at all of that. This is just gross. So I guess this is not so much of a uh, tube replacement because I didn't really need to replace it, more like a cleanup of the area and a pulling out of the filament. Someone online told me that the cheapest and most effective way to upgrade your 3D printing enclosure was to inc include a cinder block on the bottom. And I thought, hey, you know what, that sounds like a good idea. Since we are upgrading the enclosure anyways, why not do this? This block from Home Depot was around $5.50 Canadian. It's very, very cheap. 
I bought this piece of wood at Home Depot as well for like, well, the cutting was for free, but the wood in itself was like $14 or something like that. It's not really bad at all. There are holes that came with it. I don't know what they're used for, but I do plan on using 3D printing uh, to basically fill these gaps and put things on the side to hold some tools. The bottom over here is actually a panel for, I think most floorings for houses, um, but it was just almost the perfect size as the Ikea table that I've been using for the enclosure. And all this together is to say, I want to put the enclosure on this because the current enclosure, the table legs just aren't working that well anymore. And that's kind of the goal for today. So we're going to do that. First things first, let's check to see if it actually works. Yep, that works. It's held down exactly where things are supposed to be. It's a quick demonstration. I do want it to look like this. Thank you, Aslan, for demonstrating why I need an enclosure. <laughs> the bottom paneling was such a good purchase. Because everything's basically here. I just need to kind of screw it all in place and then it'll be good. So I bought the cinder block on the bottom because it works very, very well for what I needed to do. It's hard to see, but the top of the enclosure is right over here. And this part going upwards, that's not a lot of space. It's approximately five centimeters. The cinder block is 4.8 centimeters, which means if I had the cinder block just inputted into the IKEA enclosure, the top part will be very close to the top. If I'm printing something very large and I need the full axis of the Z axis, it was just gonna touch the top. There's no other way around it. So hence why I got wood on the bottom to basically bring this up. This is the general concept. Unlike the one I'm currently using, which is just on top of an Ikea table, it moves around and wobbles a lot. This is maybe on the bottom level, so it won't actually move as much. Or at least I hope it won't. So that is the plan. So I have an old yoga mat here that I don't really use much at all. I want that to be kind of on the bottom part of this. As I like the watch. screws here into the bottom part here and then two extra screws on the side just to secure it in place like there and we're gonna do that for this side as well as that side
so Jenny has bought a keyboard from these guys. And I think this might actually look as a pretty good alternative way to hold everything in place. Foam fits there almost perfectly, and I think it could fit here. Okay, so I put the two holes in here in the right spots. I don't think the enclosure was meant to have it like this. I think it was always meant to like this because this way the Prusa can actually come in a little bit more forward. So we're gonna do it this way. The second reason I'm doing it this way is because unfortunately, the screws are too high. So this would actually get in the way of the screws if it was the other way. The screw heads would actually touch. Anyhow, 
I'm gonna just put this in back here and then I think that's gonna be the end of the project. Those are the OCD look away, but I can't fix this. This is a problem with the acrylic that I bought. It was not to right dimensions. much better in terms of print area. Now, as with all things, as soon as I move anything from here, the first thing to do is we're going to calibrate. Okay, so this is the final product of the first print. Um, to be honest, I'm a little concerned because I never had issues like this with my printer previously, but you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a uh, misprint right there. Bottom's fine, but top not so much. Oh, and for those who are wondering what this is, when we were in Japan, we went to the Ghibli Museum, and every time we go to the Ghibli Museum, you get like a little thing like this, as like a souvenir, and we got one. I felt that was kind of not great if I just left it kind of on my table as a piece of paper. So what I did is I uh, cut out a business card and used that as a backdrop so you can still see the picture a little bit. And then this, and then this, what I just printed was it's just a shield for the uh, the Ghibli Museum thing, I guess. Anyhow, that is the uh, the enclosure upgrade plus the first print after calibration again. 